Hello, this is not a spring chicken. Yes, it's countdown to Christmas, but happy Hanukkah. And meanwhile, in the market, the stock market is roaring. And oh, real estate says we might have fudged on those numbers just a bit. Oh, didn't we talk about that last week? Well, for now, we're going to bring Old Cam on with comments on the headlines of today. Can't get the nomination, so you can't win, can you? And it looks like Sarah Palin may be back in the presidential race. Well, because it works this way. Mitt Romney has never got above 25% of the Republican primary voters. And the object is, if you do not get the prime, if you don't win the primaries and get the nomination, you can't beat the president. And, and, and you think that they're going to come, they didn't come out to vote, they could have beat Obama. The Republicans did not come out to vote for McCain. Mm -hmm. so the Republicans say, well, Gimmish isn't, isn't modern enough. Well, he's not going to get the nomination. He's on the verge of pulling out right now. Mm -hmm. Because they said that he's the, he, he can't, okay, Romney is hitting him with millions of dollars of ads. Get, uh, new, uh, Ron Paul is hitting with millions of dollars ads. The Democratic Party is hitting him. They said he doesn't have the resources to counter the attacks on him when he's starting to fall. Mm. So, and they're not going to nominate Romney, folks. So, they're going to have to get to their hands. Palin basically knows that she doesn't have to be signed up for any primary. None. They can write her name in enough that it will mean there'll be a floor fight. And a, I heard a guy say last night, one of the Democratic people, one of the Democratic pollsters, who's basically an honest person, he said, the Republicans need a floor fight. Mm -hmm. Because it takes the emphasis away from Obama if they're battling out on the floor for the vote. Because it go, they can go on for day after day after day. And it gets the, it hooks the people because they, they said, no one watching television today has ever seen a floor fight. Oh, that's true. And four dead dozens missing after Russian oil platform capsizes. I know. The, the Russians, they got the biggest leak in the history of the universe in the Soviet Union. They just lost a platform that is now going to be leaking into the Caspian Sea. And are the environmentalists saying a single thing about the Russians? Mm -hmm. No. It's just it's non-existent news to the environmentalists. And TV companies have a year to pipe down loud ads. I, I know. First of all, I hate... They've been that. doing that for a long time. Okay, what happens is that the, the commercial companies don't have a thing, a single thing to do it. You know what happens? They got... Okay, I, I come from the broadcasting side. I, my basic degree was in broadcast journalism. You know, I do have to be some talkers, but what they do is called pot up, pot down. What happens is, before the commercial comes in, the TV stations will take the sound down. And then when the commercial comes on, they take the sound back to exactly the same level it was before they took it down. It makes it sound like it's screaming at you. Oh. So therefore, they're not going to change anything. You know what they're going to do? They're going to let it stay at the same sound level. Instead of, instead of them having to go pot down, pot up, they're going to leave it the same. So it's you know what I just realized? Um, because it's coming from a different feed. They may have been recorded at different sound levels. So when you pull in the feed... Okay, they're all playing it on your level all the same, but if something was recorded at a different sound level on the recording, guess what happens? That's for the sound, that's for the engineer at the station that when he's feeding, watching those things to watch the level. Oh, I heard another guy said, well, we're going to do it with this pot up before the commercial comes in. And then the commercial uh, sounds like, it, you know, they're going to be, okay, say you're, you're, you're speaking like, Oh, right now, ladies and gentlemen. And then you go, and then a commercial comes in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have this to sell. And then it goes down, then they lower the volume down for the rest of the show. If you're up beforehand, before they've been taking it down and playing it even. It's a, it's a gimmick that they have been doing for, because they wanted an emphasis on the commercial. They have never recorded the commercial louder. Oh. They simply rate, they lower they the lower volume it. and let the commercial come in at the volume it was recorded at. Ah, yeah, and right. daughters of New Jersey man who fled wife's murder scene found. I know, generally, that, that, okay. Problem is, is most, most killers do not bother with children. They don't care about children. They've never seen Batman, where Batman became, you know, the man of the night because he was getting at, you know, wanting to get the people that killed his father and mother. And ground beef recalled in 16 states over E. coli concern. I, mean, I don't understand this. I mean, I would think that you save the cost of lo loss of all of this beef and all this chicken and shrimp and stuff if you just have somebody in your own place with internal control. 
All you do is you go through every now and then and check stuff. You make certain something happens. You realize what, what, um, what like 30 million pounds of, of beef cost? It's like 100, they voted 120, 130 million dollars they lost because they wouldn't hire somebody to do what, 10 bucks an hour, you know, 400 dollars a week. Uh, for, for 400 dollars a week, then see, it was what, 20,000 dollars a year. Hundred twenty million dollars, twenty thousand dollars, hundred twenty million. It's not one of those things that it you get caught. You always get caught. An unharmed baby found with two dead parents in Alaska Village. Because they don't they don't kill children if you can avoid it. If you're a pro, you never kill the children. That's how it works. Shoplifters robbed while stealing from grocery store. Yeah, that was the ultimate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he shoplifting, and they stole the stuff from. They stole his stuff while he was shoplifting, and he complained. I love it. They they stole my wallet, and then they got they opened. Uh, you know, it's called. It's one of those things where they put it under criminal and stupid things. He's he's got tons of stuff, merchandise he stole stuck in his pockets of his outfit, and he has he's complaining about a stolen wallet. And feds tell unconventional sperm donor to cease and desist. Well, no, I don't think they can. They really can't because can, he was, can you do, he was, <laughs> What's an unconventional sperm donor? Uh, he, you know, he was basically contributing the old-fashioned way, and there's nothing illegal about it, folks. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I heard that I heard that last night on one of the news shows. The guy, he said, in other words, they're telling a guy he can't have sex with somebody. And, <laughs> you know, and and he wasn't, you know. They said, "Why?" They said, "Well, he was charged." The, the lawyer on the show said, "Well, he was probably charging for it, and that makes it prostitution." And they said, "No, he was giving it away." They said, "Well, then they're screwed." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they can't tell a guy he can't give it away. Well, <laughs> it, was, it was a stud, you know. Some guy. Okay, say so you take a guy out to dinner, and you have a really nice place to go have a good time in. That is not prostitution. That's what every woman in the history of the universe has done. Well, then we're, then I guess all the women are prostitutes. <laughs> That's what they would say. So. ESPN football analyst to run for U.S. Senate as Republican. Yeah, because the, uh, the, the football player in Texas, folks, like he went to Texas Christian University, was a pro bowler, which means he stands a real good chance of winning K. Bailey Hutchinson's seat in Texas because they, they got a dweeb running in the Democratic primary. <laughs> and two Muslim men kicked off the plane flight, Sioux Airlines. They're not going to have it. Okay, you have no chance of winning whatsoever because the TSA is in charge. And you can't get the TSA to listen to sensible. And yeah, and it's probably two Muslim sources that kicked them off. <laughs> yeah, no, because uh, the, uh, there is a zero tolerance on a lot of things that goes on in airplanes anymore. I mean, totally zero tolerance. Well, and it's... The you know what? And they are instructed to do what they feel is right for the safety of the airplane and the passengers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What I like, though, is here's Alec Baldwin last night. They tossed him off the plane because they've been sitting on a tarmac for an hour and a half, and he's playing with his, uh, his word game. And then they... Uh, they, and, if, and they, then they put him on another Air, American Airlines plane to take him back to beat the plane that he was just on. I love that one. And then he pointed out, I listened last night, he said, he was reading this thing. Um, you know, the FAA gives approval for pilots to uh, keep their cell phones and their iPads on during flight and take off. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Isn't and then that... he simply says, uh, the pilots can do what they tell the pilot, to tell the passengers is dangerous, which means it's not dangerous, isn't it? And, uh, and then the host of the show, I, I think that's right, Alex. He said, <laughs> you, you think that they're going to, you know, you understand why they never charged me with anything? Because they knew that that same thing was coming out the very next day, that pilots will be allowed to keep their cell phones and their, uh, and their tablets and iPads on during takeoff and flight. That's a perfect one to share through social media. Yeah. That's <laughs> a perfect one. Oh, we got another one for, yeah, okay. We, we didn't get to this one yesterday. I love this one for the social media. The House of Representatives, according to Franklin Act, are not allowed to say on their Christmas cards to constituents, Merry Christmas. It's, set, it's a Christmas card. It's a Christmas card. It doesn't say Happy Holidays on a Christmas card. It says, it is a Christmas card. But you said you can write Happy Holidays. They cannot write Merry Christmas on 
the Christmas card, mm -hmm. which says Merry Christmas on the Christmas card. <laughs> but the Senate can the Senate can the Senate can take a Christmas card and write Merry Christmas from Joe Blow. Speaking of, where is Santa Claus? <laughs> and I'm on the way. Before we we gotta have <laughs> That was super fly Obama to end the show. <laughs> and a Monty Bubbleism from the Mark Twain of the Animal Kingdom. Okay, uh, it, sometimes political correctness goes so far that the people that they're trying to protect with the political correctness are the ones that basically have to end it themselves.